Hey friends, welcome to the year 2462. Welcome to the Nuestra Mining Colony, located 55 light years from Earth. When we last saw Ian and Rias, Rias was at his workstation overworking himself. He couldn't stop worrying about Ian, and that made his condition worse. The third AI module had been found, and crews were trying to restore Madre, the Nuestra Colony AI. There's two AI modules unaccounted for. Ian and Gutierrez and Elias flew Shuttle 2 to the Smiling Mines to deal with a medical emergency and evacuate the miners back to Nuestra. Ian had enhanced the scanners and found that two Dagger XFs, the short-range fighters the Raiders used, followed them. The Raiders launched missiles. And now, Chapter 19, Nuestra Mining Colony. Medical. Rias. I lay in my usual bunk in medical, staring at the blank ceiling, and listening to the monitor beep in time with my heart. It was halfway through night mode, and as weak and as tired as I was, I couldn't sleep. The fear kept me awake. Ian was out there, alone, and so were the raiders. His shuttle was no match for a Dagger XF. Daggers had a complement of 12 ship-to-ship -ship missiles with an explosive yield high enough to punch through reinforced starship plating. Then they had their Gatling Railers, a small railgun that shot particles the size of a grain of sand. But there was no way a shuttle could defend against that. A dagger's grav engines were designed for high speeds and even higher bursts in emergencies. Chemicals would flood the pilot's body so they could function in the high G-stress of zero-G combat. It was a killing machine. The shuttle didn't stand a chance against them. Nothing in this system did. Ian would die, and Gutierrez, and Elias, and all the miners. And the raiders would fly away laughing, just like they did when they shot down the Adi Shachar. I can't do anything. I pulled up my new data pad, now mostly finished. A little bigger, a little heavier, a lot more durable. Extended comm range, extended memory, extended power reserves, enhanced processing speed, holographic capabilities, completely voice capable, a triple AI processor. One of my old ones was salvageable. And I had made the casing from leftover parts from Doc's shiny cart. It also had old-fashioned exterior jacks so I could work independent of any wireless network, and nobody could see what I was doing. Tristan and Madre made me paranoid. I had designed and built a customized buffer and partition. Madre would never violate my system again. I even built a trial version of a communications input feed that I would use for Emilio's data pad. Any communication coming in would be routed to me first, once I had solved a few details. My new shiny data pad operated almost twice as fast as my old data pad, but it had an odd surgical precision my old one never had. Doc had given me two of his medical AIs, but for some reason he didn't want me to know it was him. I knew equipment. He couldn't hide it from me, but if I said thanks, I would embarrass him. As soon as Nuestra settled down, I'd build that cart for him. Lightweight, shiny, durable, and able to hold twice as much weight. I'd make it into a work of art to quietly say, thanks for putting up with me and keeping me alive. With my data pad, I patched into the main communications feed. Data pad, any communications from Ian? I asked. Negative, it said. Its voice was different from my old one. Masculine, deep, kind of like my dad's voice. Immediate relay of any communications from Ian or Shuttle 2, I said. Then I called CNC. Val, Carla's daughter, was in charge this late at night. Hey, Rius, no, we haven't heard anything from Ian, and I promise to let you know as soon as we do. Mom's mad at you. It seems you are accessing incoming communication logs without asking permission. Tell her I said sorry, but I'm going crazy worrying about Ian. I want to know the second something comes in, I said. 
You know all you have to do is ask her and she'd say yes, Val said. If you're not calling about Ian, what do you need? I need something to do, I said. Like what? she asked. Let me work on the AI from the Adi Shachar. I know it's in bad shape, but I need something tough to work on, I said. Salvage has rigged it with power and attached feeds to it so the Madre team could eventually look at it, but they haven't done anything. Restoring Madre is the priority. Nobody can get close without proper gear because it's radioactive, she said. That's fine. I'm in medical. Can you sink me to it? I'm surprised your data pad hasn't already broken into it, she said, with a smile. Still working on remote AI access, I said. Now you ask permission. Roldan's here. Let me talk to him, she said. Then came back a couple of minutes later. Roldan said if we can't get it working, it's going to get trashed, so you might as well poke around. Authorization confirmed. Anything else? That's it, I said. I'll have South Dome Food Court send over some chocolate chip cookies. According to Rafaela, that's all you eat these days, she said. CNC signing off. Good old Nuestra. Nothing is secret. Even chocolate chip cookies. I pulled up the Adi Shachar AI and opened a cross-section of the operating system. It had a lot of burned-out sectors. It would need at least ten replacement modules for it to begin thinking. I wanted something hard. Val gave it to me. Do you ever sleep? Somebody brought a plate of chocolate chip cookies and a horchata in. There's too much to do. Thanks for the cookies, I said. If I wanted to preserve the old AI and not erase back to factory standards, and since I couldn't get near it because of the radiation, I had to be creative. A creative and selective wipe to cleanse the unusual sectors, and then a reorganized defrag grouping bits of still functional data combined with the rerouting of mnemonic pathways. If I borrowed memory from a nearby crawler, I bypassed Madre and moved Crawler 12 closer to the Adi Shachar AI and locked out Madre to keep the crawler frozen in place. I recorded a message to broadcast inside the pilot chambers of the crawler. Rhea's here. I need this unit near the Adi Shachar AI. Call me if you need to know why. A quick wireless connection initiated by the crawler, and it was connected to the Adi Shachar. And me. A simple reorganization of data, copy the working buffer onto the side memory in the crawler, and if I ran the primary logic functions through a sub-motherboard in the crawler, I could get the Addy AI active enough for its own self-repair functions to kick in. Three hours into the project, my data pad beeped. Incoming transmission from Shuttle 2 and Ian Alvarado, playing now. I placed the Adi Shachar on self-repair and leaned back to listen to my love. I wish he had never gone. Ian's voice. Dagger XFs, this is Shuttle 2. We are unarmed and on a medical mission. Your missile attack is an act of cowardice and an act of murder. Nuestra is already aware of your presence and your conspirators in Nuestra are captured. Your attack means you are declaring war with the Bentley Thwaite Corporation. Stop your attack. The daggers fired at Shuttle 2. I couldn't breathe. My heart beat doubled in a second. My blood pressure shot up 50 points. A shuttle didn't have the armor. One missile was all it would take to destroy it. Ian would have died hours ago. Something froze inside me. The pain inside me was as bad as when my dad died. I squeezed my eyes shut and endured the ache. Ian was dead. The raiders had found the man I love. The message was time-stamped seven hours ago. It had taken that long to reach Nuestra. They had already killed Ian and Gutierrez and Elias. Shuttle 2 was gone. Who would evacuate the miners? Ian was dead. The communication from Shuttle 2 contained logs, data files, and full sensor scans. Do you wish to view at this time, my datapad said. Datapad, assume control of this section of medical, and shut off all lights and minimize sound. Activate holographic mode. Organize the data chronologically and show me Ian's last flight. Begin at launch, I said. The ache inside me blossomed into hatred, and I wiped tears with the back of my hand. Ian was dead. The room turned into a holographic starfield, 
and it showed Shuttle 2 lifting off from the five domes of Nuestra. Two daggers shadowed Shuttle 2, following the man I loved. They had killed Ian. He'd been dead for seven hours. I forced myself to breathe. The curtain parted to the rest of medical, and Emilio and Carla ran in. We're too late, Carla said. He's already viewing it. His data pad got it before we did. I'm sorry, Rias, Emilio said. I ignored him, and I played with the images like a conductor directing a symphony. I had to know what happened to my lover. Especially if I'm going to get revenge. Datapad, coordinate logs and records as they come in and show me what happened. Shuttle 2, approaching the smiling minds. Ian. Seven hours earlier. Datapad, I said. Expand sensor range to maximum. I need to know if there are any more ships in the vicinity. Affirmative, my datapad said. What kind of an AI does a dagger have? Gutierrez asked. No other ships detected. A Dagger XF has two low-level AIs, one for flight and one for stability and life support, my datapad said. That seems odd, and Rios would call it inefficient, Gutierrez said. They're using two smaller AI modules where we would use one? The missiles, I asked. Two approaching. They are AI enhanced, my datapad said. For this to work, I needed a lot of information. AI type? They are a smaller variety than Bentleythwaite produces. Higher functions are limited, my datapad said. Basic lock and fire, I said. Affirmative, the datapad said. Are they encrypted, Gutierrez asked. Affirmative, my datapad said. Decrypt, I ordered. Current range will have a one second lag time. It is not feasible until the missiles are closer, my datapad said. I let a long, slow breath out. We had two missiles approaching, and, thanks to Rias, I had one way to get out of this alive. Either this would work, and I would throw Rias the biggest party, or I'd join Robinson and Zacharias in the cremation gardens. I wish I had my CSM, but it was more important that Rias had it. He was still trying to come home. Since I had survived the crash of my ship, the universe had given me a second chance at life, and at love. Rias, I will come home to you. That's a promise, I whispered. If Gutierrez heard, he didn't say anything. Gutierrez, full speed right at the daggers and broadcast everything. Rias will need as much information as possible. When Mr. Gunther comes back, he will need to see this. Send it to the Smiling Minds also, so they know what's going on. I want so many broadcasts that any other operatives on Nuestra can't hide it. Gutierrez played with the controls. I'll never see Karina again. I'll never know what she named our baby. Did I tell you that Doc said that Karina and I were having a girl? She'll never know me, and I'll never get to hold her. Don't give up yet. Trust Rias. This is one of his tricks, I said. Tell me the second we're in calm range of the missiles. It's time for a little distraction. Shuttle 2, calm channel. Open frequency and broadcast in all directions. Confirmed. Shuttle 2 said. To the stupid pilots of the daggers, yes, I have full scans of who you are and what you're piloting, and yes, I'm making sure everybody sees you. Your ships destroyed my ships. You killed my friend. My boyfriend is still critical and is getting worse every day. And now you're stupid enough to fire on a little tiny shuttle. Your agents endangered Nuestra, home of the best food and the best beer and the Bentleythwaite arm. It's even better than anything that Mason Garrett Wade can produce. Yes, I know it's you. And yes, I know you have a Hades-class carrier and a base in this little tiny system. You started an intercorporate war, and my boss is more like that. You've picked a fight with Bentley Thwaite Corporation, and it's time to show you what we do to trespassers. Communication range achieved, Shuttle 2 said. And communications, I said. Continue broadcasting exterior scans, but don't include us. We need some secrets. Datapad, Shuttle 2, work together and sync with the closest missile. They have a decryption algorithm to prevent such a thing, my datapad said. If you're anything like Rias' old datapad, that little AI won't stand a chance. Break the decryption and lock out the dagger controlling it, I said. 
We waited 10 seconds. We waited 15 seconds. If this didn't work, Rios would never find my body, and Gutierrez would never see his baby. It's not working, Gutierrez said. Give it time, I said. They have to crack a different operating system, and our two AIs have never done this before. 20 seconds passed. The missile is getting close, Gutierrez said. 25 seconds passed. Decryption neutralized, my data pad said. Reacquire target lock back to the dagger that fired it. Does the missile have a live feed back to the dagger? Affirmative, though there is a small time lag, my data pad said. They are vulnerable and don't know it. We can send commands right through that link and bypass any internal security programs. I want a complete scan of everything they have so Rias can look at it later, I said. Acknowledged, my data pad said. Lock down their communications so they can't call for help and send them this message. Say hello to Robinson. He's the man you murdered. Actions undertaken, my data pad said. Shut down their engines. I want them to feel the same fear I felt when I crashed, I shouted. A few seconds later, the data pad said, Done. A moment later, the missile veered off its original course, changed trajectory, and circled around to the dagger that had shot it. They have sent a destruct code, my data pad said. Lock them out and destroy that ship. Give me comms, I said. How's it feel to get shot out of the sky? Alone, far from home. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. End communication. Alert, Shuttle 2 said. Second missile is one minute from impact. Acknowledged, I said. Datapad, Shuttle 2, assume control of second missile. Ten seconds passed. Control assumed. Do you wish the same parameters as for the previous missile? My data pad said. You got it, I said. The second missile broke off and changed course to circle around to the second dagger. The first dagger tried to move but couldn't. The missile hit the dagger, blowing it completely apart. One down, Gutierrez said. Shuttle two, fly directly towards the other dagger, I said. Minor course adjustment in progress, it said. The second dagger has achieved some maneuverability, the data pad said. Enough to escape the missile? I asked. Negative. On the view screen, the other dagger began to change course. The data pad displayed the intercept pattern of the missile. Communications incoming from second dagger, my data pad said. Voice only, I said. Please, stop. I have a family. So did Robinson, and you killed him. It didn't stop you from destroying my ship, and my boyfriend is dying because of you, I said. You also fired on an unarmed, defenseless shuttle on a medical mission. That means you're scum. I don't have any sympathy for you. I hope Robinson beats you up before you go to hell. Don't you have any compassion? Did you for me? For my crew? For my boyfriend? For the people we're trying to rescue? For the people in Nuestra? I said. Alert. The remaining dagger launched 11 missiles. Shuttle 2 said. Break communications. Datapad, can you shut down each missile and leave them floating for pickup? I asked. Affirmative. Shuttle 2, plot a course to avoid the missiles and head to the dagger. Cause a weapons malfunction or something. I want this dagger to run back to tell everybody that Nuestra can take care of itself, I said. Affirmative, my datapad said. One by one, the missile shut down. But we weren't fast enough. The pilot of the dagger managed to trigger a self-destruct sequence in eight of them. Open calm to the dagger, I said. Communications open, Shuttle 2 said. To the coward in the dagger, this is your chance. Run to your base and tell them thank you for the missiles. Nuestra is now armed. No, what you're doing is impossible, he said. The dagger suddenly surged ahead, straight towards us. I don't know if it was a kamikaze run or if he had another weapon. I didn't want to find out. Datapad, target lock with nearest missile and destroy that ship, I said. Nuestra Colony. Medical. Rias. Rias, I'm okay. Tell Karina Gutierrez is okay and tell Muñeca that Elias is okay too. We'll be a little delayed coming home, but we'll have three missiles. I'm sending the basic specs. Maybe the techs in the manufacturing dome can use them to make launchers and more missiles. I'm also sending the readings we took of the dagger. Maybe you can do something with them. We're heading to the Smiling Mines to pick up and treat the injured. 
Then we're taking the scenic route. There's ten more daggers in a Hades Inferno waiting out there, so I'm flying sneaky. I can't wait to tell you how we did this, but I'll give you a hint. They lost an arm wrestling contest. I'll have to do some exercising to make my arms stronger, if you know what I mean. I love you. Rias, I wish I could fly back and tell you everything, but we have to fly dark for a while. Who knows what they will do once they realize that we destroyed two of their ships. Keep the beer cold and close by, because we're going to need a couple. Tell Karina I love her, Gutierrez said, leaning into the screen. And Muñeca as well, Elias said, floating beside Ian. Rias, just hold on until I get back, okay? Ian said. This is Shuttle 2 signing off. Ian lived. I replayed the battle on the hollow field display and laughed. Ian survived by arm wrestling with the daggers. Of course I knew what he meant, and I tapped my data pad. Ian had jury rigged his own dual AI processor. I shut down the hollow field and slumped on my bunk. What did Ian mean? Carla said. It means we need to increase our communication and our sensor range, and we need to get Madre working fast, I said. They now know we have their people. If Mason Garrett Wade is smart, they will attempt to rescue Perlita and Tristan, or try to kill them so we don't learn what they know. What do they know? Carla asked. Something worth the Hades Inferno sneaking into our system, Emilio said. Madre, get me security. We're about to have some rude company. Thank you for listening, friends. By the way, if you noticed any noises in the background, that was my little dog. She was snoring. Just a little note about space. Corporations control everything about space. There are the smaller corporations that do business on Earth, but space itself is controlled by six corporations. There are five trade arms, beginning at Earth and angling away. The Bentley Thwaite Corporation controls one. The Mason Garrett Wade Conglomerate controls a second. The Pollard Kahn Mercantile Trade Establishment controls a third. The Murphy Drake Emporium controls the fourth. And finally, the Armstrong Memorium, the fifth. Arguably, the most powerful corporation is the Lunar University, because they have universities set up in each arm, as well as their parent organization on Luna. Any place that has a sizable population, like Campbell Station, has a university extension program. The Lunar University also controls the long-range exploration vessel, Zhang He, as well as many others. It is a long process to set up a jump gate, and the Lunar University has the patience and the budget for it. They also make a lot of money because they lease out the jump gates to the various corporations and are responsible for a jump gate's continual maintenance. Once again, he who makes the most money makes the rules for everybody else. Or put another way, he who controls the jump gates controls everybody else. Thank you for joining me, friends. We'll see you next time. Peace.